I'm ready. Are you ready? We're ready. Oh, I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome to another edition of SciVive Sunday. Glad to have you here. Um, super awesome guest, Belly of Brand, everyone. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm I so glad to have you, you here, uh, Bran. Yeah. Yeah, man, no, thanks. You, thanks for doing this. Yeah, absolutely. You're one of the first people I remember, like, when I just started, like, you commented or liked or something, and I was just like, someone cares. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, uh, so it's so really sweet. cool because, I mean, now it's to the point where, because I spend a little bit less time on, I mean, actually a lot, but a lot less time on social media than, than I used to in the past, and, uh, so anyways, yeah, I'll find out through other hexagons or I'll just be on, on YouTube sometimes and you see a channel and it's like maybe in like in the recommendation and it's like, oh, I've never seen this channel before. And then lo and behold, you find out like, oh, they're talking about, you know, Hex Pulse and Pulse X or kind of like the ecosystem for like five or six different videos. And it's uh, it's really cool. We've got quite a, uh, a lot of momentum built up. Yeah. Absolutely. It's really awesome too, as someone who is, I consider myself a newer streamer, like within the last year, even like me seeing newer people come on in and I'm just like, yes, this is great. Like we, we can take, you know, and that's what the sentiment that I keep hearing over and over again in our community is if you want to stream, come do it because there's never enough, you know, like there's, there's never yeah. going to be enough of us doing this. And, you know, if you think about all the other influencers across the crypto sphere, and you know what they're doing and who they're bringing in like we we need more people and more personalities to just be you know mm. be who you are and be authentic and share what you love and and share you know what it is that you know whatever it is you want to contribute to the community mm. so that yeah, that's true. been great because <laughs> well, like even even people i was listening to uh jim rat crypto just uh i mean he ended his stream like maybe three minutes before you and i were in the green room okay but um, so I was listening to Wendy's for Tendies and, you know, you kind of mentioned, yeah, people that have have input that that can be beneficial because obviously he's not really like a, a streamer per se, even though he's streamed a lot. It's not really like something that he does on a consistent basis. But mm -hmm. damn, I need to have him on my stream and channel because, you know, maybe there's some things that I've talked about, at least with say like Pulse and Pulse X and stuff like that, that like he has more experience with and I'm kind of just, you know. <laughs> pulling it from from what I've seen and from what I think I know but yeah it's really cool to have people from you know all different kinds of uh crossroads and experiences and then culminate that information yeah yeah absolutely well speaking of culminating information <laughs> the information that we are here to talk about today is sci-fi <laughs> um, we're gonna focus on chapter two and we decided to do that because of the fitness challenge that's starting today um, chapter two is titled Body, and there are a lot of different topics that it covers, actually. Um, let me pull this up real quick. So where I want to start, the first, like, few chapters, there's, like, sleep, diet, personal hygiene, vision. I, I kind of just want to start with the exercise and fitness um, part of it. That has always been a challenge for me. I do not enjoy exercising. I do not like going to the gym. Um, it is not fun for me. I don't like being inside in a stuffy gym. Like, that's just not my style. Like, I don't... Uh, oh, yeah. I had a I had a boyfriend for a while who was a gym rat. And, like, that was his thing. And, he, <laughs> you know, he went all the time. And, you know, I'd go every now and then with him. I, like, I, I got a membership and, and we'd go together. But it just wasn't ever something that was, like, fun for me or, like interesting at all mm. um what ended up happening um i guess a little bit of my back my fitness background i guess um and let me see this i've never i haven't done screen sharing and stuff yet but i want to just so y'all can see this picture and i'm trying to hide the other person in it let me see if i can make this happen uh i don't know if this is gonna work let's see okay it might you might see like screenception where you're seeing my screen and then the screen and then the screen. Hold on. Mm -hmm. Oh, share. Here we go. Share. Um, share screen. Okay. Can you guys see that? Kind of. 
No, or maybe I, a window. Wait, wait, wait. Aha. Uh -huh. All right. So <laughs> hopefully this person will, <laughs> he'll probably never watch this, but that was me. <laughs> Um, it was me and my ex-boyfriend. Um, that was probably like 2010, 2010, 2011. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think at that point I was around 200 pounds, like probably just a little bit over in fact. And people say, you know, like people wouldn't have guessed that I hear that I carry my weight well kind of thing, you know? Sure, sure. Um, but I wasn't healthy for sure. You know, I wasn't, you know, not working out, not eating well, um, I was sed sedentary very often, mm, um, mm. was working for a video game company at the time and, um, you know, just sat all day and then came home and played games all night. So <laughs> that was pretty much my life. And what ended up happening is I decided I, I was, I had moved to Austin, um, from California and I had been living there for a few years and I was really in love with the city and, um, the people and just I was like you know what I really want to give back to the city and I want to do something because I really love being here I enjoy being a resident of this place so I started looking into different volunteer opportunities and this um this group popped up it, it was called the food is free project and I was like mm -hmm. oh huh that's kind of cool um what's this all about so I it was just perfect timing I got in um on their like second workshop and they basically went around their neighborhood and created front yard gardens for people for okay. zero to like very low cost. We recycled pallets and election signs and used nice, that nice. to create a garden cool. bed. That's and, awesome. And yeah, and it was great. I, I learned a lot about food growing and um and through that. Someone else who worked at the, the same game company found out that I was interested in this kind of field. And he came to me and he was like, hey, I'm about to quit this job and go work on a farm in the middle of nowhere in Texas. Want to come with me? Nice, <laughs> and nice. so I was crazy enough at the time to say yes. So I ended up um, moving out to this farm in the middle of nowhere in Texas. And that changed my life. It completely How many years life. ago was this? That was in 2012, I want to say. Like, kind of okay, shortly yeah. after that that picture of me that you saw. It was sure, not sure. long after that. So, it's probably 2012, 2013 at the latest. But, okay, yeah, sure. just around then. And that, I mean, kind of, I bring all this up to make the point that that transition took me 10 years. It did mm. not happen in 90 days. It didn't happen overnight. You know, I I changed my habits. And mm. there were just all of these things. I changed my lifestyle. I didn't go on a diet. Uh, I didn't start working out. Right, right, right. It was just a lot of little things <clears throat> that added up to, you know, who I am today and how I, how I live my life and what I put in my body. And that was a huge part mm. of it was learning learning what is in food, you know, yeah. going from eating a lot of processed stuff and, and things that are packaged to, I will never forget the first time I pulled a beet and they're called candy cane beets specifically was this one that I had. I pulled mm. this beet out of the ground. I washed it off and I took a bite <laughs> and it was just miraculous. I was like, Oh, food from the ground. What? <laughs> <laughs> so that's part of why I'm involved with hex foodies. I love that group. Um, I am super like gung ho about permaculture and growing your own food. Someone had just asked me recently. Um, I think it was actually thoughts child, um, was wondering about how I'm doing that on the road. Cause I live in a van now and I'm not, unfortunately, it's not something that I am able to do, but sure. I'm hopeful that wherever I land, you know, like, like months at a time that there's mm -hmm. maybe a, um, like a community garden or something that yeah, I can contribute yep, yep. to in that way so um, that's super cool yeah no that's so that's, yeah, that's awesome that you mentioned that's awesome that you mentioned the uh you know kind of taking things from like a minimalist standpoint and and growing the uh you know the vegetables and the fruits and things like that like my dad at, at our place um just a few cities away we're getting back into like the like he has like a, a wheat grass juicer and, and wheat berries that we you know germinate and you know, so we're doing the same thing, kind of like a, a mini garden with like a little greenhouse that we have. And, and I think, uh, 
because one of those like uh, one of those shots of the wheatgrass I think is equivalent to like a pound of of leafy greens or vegetables mm -hmm. things like this and anyways you're definitely right about the uh you know getting away from the processed junk and obviously it's easier said than done and actually doing it but then it really just takes you know putting those steps of going forward yeah yep absolutely Yes. Yes, indeed. So that's, you know, that's kind of what we're here to talk about is like doing those steps, <laughs> you know, like, like we're, we are, we've, you, you signed up for the challenge. Yeah. The crypto fitness. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. I had, I had myself on <laughs> mute while I was getting the water. Um, <laughs> no yeah. Worries. So yeah, I signed up for the challenge and then uh, I'm really looking forward to that. Cause like myself and, you know, myself and my three other brothers were, were really close, you know, but, um, but yeah, sometimes, you know, you're not always on, on the right path and you're kind of veering off to the other side and stuff like this. And so anyways, yeah, we're, uh, so myself and, and at least two of the brothers are, are signed up and, nice. and the other one I think is just spectating and, and, you know, might, might participate kind of in the background without the actual application and things, but, but it's so much easier to, um, you know, cause I've done a lot of things you know, and it's so much easier to do something with a, a group of people or have some sort of motivation other than just, you know, internal, right? Especially if mm -hmm. you've uh, been beaten down or, you know, haven't had enough success in the short term, you know, having people that can kind of, you know, push you and things like that to the next step uh, can can really make a difference. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I feel like you get exponential uh, like return on that because not only are you joining us virtually, but then you also have your brothers, you know, that are going to be there you know, kind of physically with you to, to go through that. So that is awesome. Mm. Um, I guess I'll say what's up to the chat real quick. I, I, we don't, oh, yeah. I, I do interact, interact uh, with the chat here and there. Um, so, but yeah, if you don't get shouted out, don't cry. It's going to be all right. I still love you. <laughs> um, so Eric Hall, Bit Finesse, Jen Hex, we got Craig up in here, Mr. Prophet, Francis, I love Jesus, Bearded Saints, Hopper Man 99, Morton Hake, uh rags to riches what's up rags ninja chopstick good to see you hey ninja chopstick um still would love to see about helping your daughter uh with getting uh hex minded so if you're still looking to do that let's definitely uh chat again um and re rehash that uh we got lindsay the hexkin i see riddick hex siren yeah jackie good to see you jackie Sandy Beach and Spike and Tin Top. What is up, friends? Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Yes, we are here to preach the good word of SciVive <laughs> <laughs> and talk about how we can SciVive. I mean, it's interesting that mm. Richard mentioned he wants to change the name because um, I, I like it. I think that it's yeah, me catchy. Too. <laughs> me too. Um, yeah, I, I like that it's sci-vive, sci-viving through science is, is the way mm -hmm, he, mm -hmm. you know, termed that. And yep. I think it's great, but who knows? Maybe I we'll come too. up with something. Um, I, yeah, I think it's just before it's time, right? Because like, yeah, obviously, yeah, you know, I mean, Richard says like, oh, you know, you got to give people like I think even in the book, like the, the sex drugs and the rock and roll or the money, power and respect and stuff mm -hmm. like that um, before they can kind of realize, okay you know, maybe I should start focusing on some things that are more bigger, bigger picture and things like that. But, but yeah, I don't think the name is necessarily bad. I mean, heck I was on, I was on, uh, just commenting in the chat one time, uh, under the SciVive channel and this guy's mm -hmm. like, SciVive, what, what SciVive? And he's like, I need to know more about SciVive. And, uh, yes. so then I was telling him a little bit about it, but, but, uh, but yeah, I don't think really Richard's put enough. I mean, you know, he can't really give himself uh, I feel, yeah, I feel like he he's putting it down before it's even getting started. Yeah, he's barely put yeah. any effort into it aside from writing the book from the audio transcripts that he had done and the editing. Right. And obviously with someone like yourself that did all of that too in, in a couple of days. And we need to talk about that too. You busted that out super quickly. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I was, I, well, it, it took so forever cool. at first. I was going really slow. I'm going to talk and try to find my charger for my laptop because I was not prepared and it's going to die. Oh yeah. So. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Sounds good. Sounds good. Um, yeah, I'll so, definitely yeah, hold down the was, fort. Uh, I mean, I can still, I'll, I'll just mention, like I started out and, um, I did the first chapter, like I did the intro real quick. And then the first chapter, I was like, oh man, this is really long. Let me break this up into two different parts. Um, 
and and then I had some family stuff happen. So I had I mm. ended up uh, moving or not moving, but I st I stayed out in California for quite some time, um, trying to help my dad um, as he went through. Oops, did I, sorry. <laughs> trying to help my dad. Um, he went through COVID. So mm, I was there just mm. kind of helping him with all that and um, taking care of him and the family as that was going on. So I had kind of a hiatus, I guess. And then when I got back and started doing it again, um, I think that the reception was so great. Like I, people had started saying how much they loved it. And, you know, I had people asking, hey, like when, when the next chapter and all this. And it really just took me, I guess, a little bit by surprise. Um, because I, I really, and I've said this a few times, I didn't really know about Richard. Um, and even through reading sci -Vibe, this was my first time reading it as I was doing the audio narration. So I didn't realize, you know, there was such a big following and that people had already, you know, been wanting this content. So once I started like rolling again, I was just like, okay, let me just, let me just get this done. And then the fact of being someone who is, I used to do journalism and I'm familiar with editing and I loved that. And I, I'm still very much the person like, if you are writing a lot and it's not two words, ooh, like it gets <laughs> under my skin, man. Like use, use the correct yours and theirs, please. Oh, geez. Um, <laughs> I know what you mean. Yeah. Or like I saw, yeah. I saw someone that that's close to me that uh, was saying like, you know, they were saying like time to lose the weight in, in L O O S E. And it's like, that's loose, not loose. Damn it. <laughs> you know, but uh, yeah. common sense ain't common, I guess. <laughs> mm. Yes. So I, I knew that I wanted to edit it as I was finishing the reading. I was like, you know what? I want to go back and edit this so that it's an actual like readable physical thing that can be printed. I know. And I know people print it out as it is, you know, right now, but you know, wouldn't it be great if there was an actual physical copy that we could give to people or hand out, you know? And then on top of that, being able to read it after that point again and doing the narration over. So, because people have been asking, can you get it on Spotify? Can we put it on mm -hmm. Audible? And I don't, I don't feel like the quality is there for sure. sure. I mean, it's, there's like, especially chapter seven. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> the first like hour of chapter seven, I didn't realize I was recording out of my laptop mic. And so there's birds chirping and cars driving by, <laughs> you know, it's, 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 it's what I, it's, I did what I could with what I had at the time. And it was my first ever endeavor in doing like a extensive audio voiceover kind of thing. So yeah, I, I want to make it shine. I want it to sparkle and like be ready for Audible and for Spotify. So that's mm. a that's a huge goal. <laughs> well, yeah. yeah, I mean, thank you for thank you for doing that because because once again, uh, I think it was you that had said like, you know, you're surprised that no one had really done anything done be, before that. And yeah. when it really is like the what's called like the tragedy of the commons, right? Where where anyone mm -hmm. can do it, but no one's really being behooved or, or benefited to to do such a thing, to to put in the time and the effort that it takes to, you know, make it what it should be. Yep, absolutely, yeah. And Richard talks about that quite a bit, actually. Um, and fix fix the world has been really neat. Um, to to dive into, it's very similar in terms of uh, you know, content and it's his kind of like stream of thought type stuff. But yeah. there's def definitely some different topics. Um, and yeah. It's 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 neat. I can see how whoever edited SciVive first had a had just. I bless your heart, whoever you are, wherever you are. <laughs> again, I didn't I didn't see it before the edition that it is now. But looking at Fix the World, I can imagine yeah. what it was like because mm. it's <laughs> it's been painstaking to go through Fix the World and try and like put everything in a correct order. I'm trying now mm -hmm. to like make sure that there's chapters so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've got that one actually printed out. The uh the fix the world been been working on chipping away at that. And uh, you know, it's it's cool too, because I was listening again to some of the parts of, of Richard with, with the ladies, obviously, that, that you were on too. And and he talks about how his his book is like better than he is as far as his ideals and things like that. So mm -hmm. it's pretty cool. People that want to know more, he had mentioned. <clears throat> you're going to get less out of talking to me than you are like reading my book and my ideals. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and someone, someone came at him about like him being shallow or something, you know, and there was a bunch of the, a bunch of the ladies replied like, no, 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 no. Like you don't know our Richard, you know, like 
he can he you know, and that's i told him too i was like i was turned off at first like i didn't like the unboxing videos and he i like how he was like yeah oh, i yeah. don't know if i liked him either <laughs> but yeah i mean there's so much depth to him um and that's you can true. see that in these books it's just phenomenal uh this man um i saw a comment i want to say hi to d raj welcome in friend namaste it's cody good to see you what's up g yo yo lu yo lumi yo lumi <laughs> and bit oh, jackie too she was she was in the uh in the lady stream too so nice to see her yes hello again jackie um there was a question that i saw Someone, I think, I think it was basically like, what is, what was my biggest takeaway from SciVive? Um, I'll let you answer that first because I, I, I know I've answered it a few times <laughs> and I'll do it again. But I'd love to hear your, what's your biggest takeaway? <laughs> well, you know, it's funny that that you, uh, that yeah, that you kind of pointed it because I was curious what what you were thinking as far as that goes. I mean, honestly, I, I haven't finished the whole book, right? But uh, the okay. thing that I'll say is, yeah, I haven't finished all of it. I mean, I've read definitely. The thing that's nice about it is. You know, Richard mentioned it's not just like a, you know, most books you read from, you know, left to right and, right, and page right. to page, but this one you can, you can really skip down and things like that. But, but I don't know the the thing that I like about it is that it really is not like a, a manual or, or a guide, but like most people really do know what they, what they need to improve and, and change mm -hmm. in their lives to, you know, to become healthier or, or the bad habits that they have, you know, that's why the the gym rat challenge is, is cool because it's kind of like a you know step in the right direction obviously like you mentioned something that's 90 days not long is not going to be you know like you're not going to make all your changes then but it can right. be like a good start for those good habits so I, I don't know i mean my biggest takeaway per se is just i like the i like the the, the time section where he talks about like mm. uh i forget like Pama, pomodoro technique and some of these things that you can kind yes. of maximize your time he had talked about like Hey, if you're if you're on like a computer, you could have like a like a virtual machine running or like a, a second kind of screen running that has all of your work, and then maybe the the other screen kind of has the stuff that you're doing that's maybe you know more leisure, you know, less working type of thing, and just certain habits that you can kind of get into of of maximizing your time or or actually uh, you know being productive versus non-productive. I mean, I don't know. I'd, I'd be curious to see what what your response is too, because there's just there's so much in it that. Sometimes it's kind of hard to answer those. Like, I hate those questions. Mm -hmm. like, what's your yes. favorite color? Well, shit, yeah. I like all of them. Red, blue, green, <laughs> you know. That's right. so. They all serve a purpose. True. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it is, it's tough because it's... Uh, I, I'm, I talk often about one of the bigger takeaways for me is his call to action. That it's not just about the thinking positively or imagining or wishing it's the taking that step towards what it is that you want um so that really that i think that got driven home i'd heard concepts like that before but listening to sci like hearing him talk about it in that way really just kind of struck me like yes that makes a lot of sense <laughs> you know like it, it brings it out of the woo woo if you will you know and into yeah. the like like this is a solid thing that i want to follow and then also um, my own branding like reading about how he says that it's important to have your own brand and do your own thing. And mm. so I switched from SJ reads SciVive to this a wild SJ thing, you know, like it just, I, oh, yeah. I don't yeah. even know where it came. Like, I know it's from Pokemon, but I'm not a Pokemon fan. Like, I, I mean, yeah. I am Pokemon are cute, sure. but I never played. I never collected cards me or anything neither. like that. Yeah. It just, um, it just kind of came to me all of a sudden. I was like, you know, cause I think because of the hat, because I, I wear that mm, every now and mm -hmm. then and like I feel like yeah. I'm a I'm a wild woman. I will admit that. Like I love just, you know, being oh, out yeah. in nature and yeah. So totally. I was like, yeah, this feels right for me. So it was nice to do that and to take the branding, you know, as as much as I love sci vibe, I'm not the author and it's not the you know, quintessential what is me. <laughs> so it's it's gonna be something that I will focus on. I'm going to continue to work on it and read and do all of that, but I'm me. And I have more to offer than just SciVive. So it was it was cool that that was something that I took away from working on that project. You know, it's like, mm. oh, I'm just going to be my own thing. Thanks, Richard. <laughs> well, that's that's awesome. And and that is uh, that is really cool. I mean, yeah, you look at I mean, obviously, his last name Schuler, but say, you know, Richard Hart or someone like Gary Vaynerchuk. And and people would ask me that question, too. Like, you know, where did you come up with Ballet Brand? And it's like, it's just my name, you know, Brandon Ballet. Yeah. 
but um yeah. <laughs> you know pretty pretty simple but uh but it really is cool i mean he's and the the cool thing is too is like a lot of people that kind of would fall under maybe maybe i don't know less informed than say richard would would do like these like these paid courses or like these gurus and things like this um but richard's kind of putting it all out there for for free and in the best mm -hmm. information and so it's cool for the people that really have that drive and and that want to learn more. I mean, I still go back to Richard's videos. Like I've I've seen all of his streams and I've seen all of them at least like one and a half, you know, sometimes two, three times. But then even still sometimes when I'm spending less time on social media and things, I'll go back to his his older videos and and just scoop up any of the the breadcrumbs that maybe I had heard back then, but maybe weren't applicable back then and things like that. So he's got a whole bunch of just golden information to uh, for people that are actionable that they can actually use. Yes, 100%. I really like this um, idea, business card size things with bullet points. That'd be really hard because there's so much. It's just, it's 22 hours of audio, y'all. <laughs> like, that's it's like a whole day of listening. I listened to, I'm trying to think of what, what is something dune i don't know if dune, i don't know how long dune is but i listened to dune and that took me forever um yeah, but yeah, yeah. It, there's just so much in there it'd be so hard to do bullet points um let's see what is this punch harder in the world sci really helps increase effectiveness just getting me to think about the process of putting these things into practice has dwarfed the hex hex kings it's too damn good for sure you know that's what really excites me is that i got into this whole world through hex but it's now become so much more like the community the self-help i mean this this fitness crypto fitness challenge like i listened i was listening in last night to one of the spaces and sequoia stone and bullish were bullish ox were mm. in there and some some guy asked to speak and he was like, oh, hey, I'm just trying to check out, well, you know, what's going on in here. And, um, you know, he's, he had been listening for a little bit and he had heard about the fitness challenge and he, he was not, not a hexkin, had didn't hold any hex. And then Marco, Marco was in there and he just like started t telling him what's up. He's like, let me tell you about hex. Let me tell you, you know, how this works. And then the guy was like, oh, I'm really interested in this fitness challenge too. So it's like, we're now like able to onboard people through a fitness challenge that have never yeah, heard about hex yeah. before i mean yep. it's and, and the whole pre-viral thing y'all like yeah. i can't wait like it's cool brand like you know getting getting to meet you and other people that i did at the hexpo and seeing totally. where you're at with your life and seeing what what hex has done for you and knowing yeah. that that's on its way y'all like there, the hex yeah, is yeah, not gonna yeah. stop there's it's not mm. the code is just gonna keep going so it's exciting. Well, and the beautiful thing is too that you mentioned is like um, <clears throat> you know everyone's got things that they can that they can work on and that they can improve. You know, no one's perfect. So, so yeah, having a because I never really had a community. I mean, my parents are super religious, which which I would consider is their community, right? <clears throat> and I grew up in that stuff and was just not not a huge fan. But anyways, and then my brothers, you know, they had football, which was their community. And even though I played. You know, same thing. wasn't really my jam. I didn't really like it a whole bunch. You know, getting concussions and stuff as kids like yeah. that doesn't really no, seem very productive for society. But uh, anyway, so the point is, is that this became my community. And then you know, you mentioned uh, a whole bunch of people with the the permaculture and kind of the self sustainability. Yeah. It's really cool that um, you know the the information's there and the people that are there, and uh, they can definitely you know, help lift people up that are, that are interested or, or that are expressing the want to do that. So the fact that someone came into the Twitter space and, uh, and was not only informed on, you know, more of the health challenge that they were interested in, in the first place, but then same thing with, with crypto and something that could help their financial future is beautiful. And then yeah. same thing with Richard, when he was with all of you ladies, he had mentioned, you know, we have like an average of, like the the unique the unique wallet addresses we've got like a like a hundred thousand, and so that is absolute opportunity. And you know some people they see the price is done to ten thousand x, even though it's consolidated, right? Mm -hmm. You know eighty percent something like that. And uh, there is just so much more so much more to be had, and so much more meat yeah. on the bone. So that's the exciting part. Yes, exciting. <laughs> Speaking of meat on the bone, <laughs> I just saw this like line. <laughs> in what I'm about to read. And I was like, oh, hey, that kind of goes. So I'm going to read two sections real quick. Oh, three. Perfect. I lied. 
Yeah. So I'm going to read for a little bit. Um, and we can awesome. just kind of talk. I pop, I'll probably stop as I'm going because that's kind of how, how we do. So um, this the section that I'm starting on. Um, so th again, this is chapter two of Saivive Body. And I'm going to start with strength. It says, it's funny how much one inch of muscle around a human body gets respect. It's because that one inch used to be the difference between winning and losing in conflict. We wouldn't give as much thought to one more inch. Uh, sorry, we wouldn't give as much thought to one inch more or less on an elephant. That's because it wouldn't make any difference. There's already so many inches. It's also funny how hard it is to put that inch there or cut fat out. One single inch. The amount of work that it takes to put an inch or two of muscle on your bicep or your neck is hundreds of hours over months. The ability of respect those couple inches get you with reasonable men is also pretty large. It's funny to think that only millimeters of difference let, lets you tell the difference between one human's face and another. An inch here or there and another person uh, on another person's body will cause you to feel fear or lust so easily. That's interesting. Um, it says, you see, we care, we care so much about those few inches because for women, it might mean having enough calories to handle another life growing inside them. True. It might also mean not getting demolished physically if you piss off the wrong guy. We care about those inches, but these days with jujitsu, mace, and firearms, we haven't evolved the ability to detect and honor those force multipliers. At least not in the same way we have, we have the obvious physical traits that have been around tens of thousands of years. Tools and tactics we have developed over time and spread throughout our populations makes us vastly more effective in all the things we choose to do, both good and evil. A tool is a force multiplier, as is the gear, the wheel, and so on. You used to get a little out of what you put in. Now you get a lot more. Okay, I'm going to kind of... And then he says at the end here, being strong is better than being fast. Running analogy versus facing your problems and powerlifting. And I love that there's little po points where it's like you can tell he was going to like expand upon an idea. You know, yep. it's just like, I'm just going to put this note here. <laughs> so there's some things that I'm just like, man, I wish I could. Like, I, I want to just like give him a list and be like, you want to talk about this? Because <laughs> it sounds like you want to talk about this more. Let's have you talk about True. this some more. <laughs> True. Um, and then at the end here it says there there is a weakness in running from your problems instead of getting stronger and facing your problems. And I think that that's that can definitely be applied to this fitness challenge, you know, because mm -hmm. depending on where you are mentally, there's going to be people that you know aren't ready for that. Like they don't, they're not interested in taking the next step to into their fitness, or you know, maybe it just it it scares them that they'll have to leave their comfort zone or their comfort level or whatever it is that, you know, they feel safe and secure in, you know, but that may be that, that safety and security might be killing you, you know, like if you're just mm. eating bad and, you know, you've got True. these bad habits or a drug addiction, anything like that, you know, like it's, it's so much better to take that, to have that, you know, mindset to be able to take that stance and be like, no, I'm not going to do this any longer. Like I'm not going to continue to kill myself in this way and you know i say it sounds drastic but it that's that's you know kind of the, his point about building that muscle it's over hour many many hours over many months you know and that was kind of the point with me showing the picture of myself from earlier is it's not an overnight thing and it's it's not just mm -hmm. something that is going to be like you know the super drastic super quick thing it's a total like embodiment of these new ideals or like this this new lifestyle um totally so i'm gonna read the second section here did you want to comment on any of that before i go on yeah yeah i mean and and once again i think i yeah i mean i think a lot of the stuff is is you know it's kind of obvious once you hear it but then it's just the the practice that you know one little step in the right direction today or <clears throat> you know making the right decision and choice today can can really strengthen that willpower. And that's really what a lot of it does come down to is like, like uh, what's his name? Uh, Hex, Hex Orca or like crypto mm -hmm. curricula now was saying yeah. that he was at the grocery store the other day and he's like, it's like, man, you know, should I get the pizza? Should I not get the pizza? And then in that case, he, you know, he didn't get the pizza. Um, and then, you know, uh, yeah, it's, that's like strengthening his, his willpower for, for what he says he wants or, or what he's telling himself that he wants to do in the longer term. And it is, uh, 
you know, everyone's in different points in their life or might have been in a certain point in their life then and, and are at a certain point now. But it really is similar to kind of Hex, I would say. And, and this is why I'm excited to get back into it because it really does complement each other where it's like, you know, the, the, the marshmallow experiment where, hey, you know, you have the opportunity to have that one right now or whatever the time frame is for like the two, like whether it's like the day later or an hour later, you know, that's practicing like a, an exercise of, you know, not just caving into what you're craving or, or what you kind of want, but maybe, you know, telling yourself, hey, you know, you can have this, but, but maybe after I've earned it, you know? Yep. Absolutely. That delay, it's so, <clears throat> to me, it's so beautiful how the theme of delayed gratification runs through everything Richard does. Like, you know, yeah. it's really neat to see that. Let me see real quick. I'm just gonna double check chat real quick. I know when I get when I get to reading, I get kind of like like in the zone. <laughs> oh man. Um, let's see. Do, 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 do. I don't know if I said Joe Terry. Hello, John Bishop. Sweaty Hexican. Toby Wan Hexobi. What is going on? I. I'll try and throw you a band hammer. <laughs> uh, Y'all. Watching while you're in the shower. What is going on? Too sexy. <laughs> <laughs> um, mindset is important, Jackie. 100%. I heard um, it was either Jim Rat or Sam earlier uh, talking about... Uh, and it's interesting, Brent, because you kind of said the opposite, right? Like you were talking about how uh, self-motivation can only get you so far and then you need to, you know, have those people around you. And yeah, um, yeah. they were saying kind of the opposite. Like, you know, it's, it's good to have this motivation and people around you. But at the end of the day, you know, it does come down to your self motivation Like if you want to do it or not, like no one else can make you do this thing. That's true. Yeah. Um, let's see. I haven't had the time to see Toby. Toby one says he wants to be in the challenge, but hasn't had time to see what it's about. Um, it's already too late. I wish they would have done something. I mean, I get it because it is a 90 day. Like you have to be doing the whole 90 days or whatever. So they, there was a cutoff. So you can no longer join uh, the challenge, unfortunately. Franklin, good to see you. Glad you are here. Excellent, everyone. So uh, if you just joined or don't know what's going on, we are all about SciVive reading chapter two body and uh, i'm going to read another little section um, and this is called conditioning so over two thousand years ago socrates said no man has the right to be an amateur in the matter of physical training it is a shame for a man to grow old without seeing the beauty and strength of which his body is capable Whew. all right socrates damn uh, whole body movements are more useful in the real world and and that, I'm going to make a point on that real quick. I think that's how I started losing weight because I went from working at a desk job to working on a farm. So my whole body went from being sedentary every day to moving all the time. And it mm. wasn't, I wasn't working out again. Like it wasn't sure. like no weight lifting involved. I just happened to be walking around a farm, feeding chickens and planting food. <laughs> and That's so I, awesome. I love i love that i think he so he's, he talks about a little bit more about that he says do big compound exercises at high weight and low repetitions this way you're getting the most strength and muscle growth out of the least amount of time and i you, you can see how richard i feel like we think similarly in the the workout world because i don't i don't want to spend my time doing it i don't you know yeah. so his his said that setup that he's got with his bicycle and his computer and all that you know like that's super smart because then you Hell feel yeah. like you're doing something else productive while you're also doing something good for your body uh let's see so yeah best bang for your buck if you will some would say you're getting the most strength period some prefer to be learning or doing almost anything else than lifting weights for vanity such is the competitive life we live but if you want a quality mate, you want to be doing some lifting. How else can they tell you're better than the rest if the rest looks sexier than you? If you're going to be sitting watching television or writing a book or lazily enjoying the internet, you might as well be pedaling your feet while you're doing it. After a while, it's natural and you feel like doing it. Best part, you can eat more of what you like and be more fit with limited cost. 
The downside is that you're going to sweat a bit, so you're going to need to shower a little bit more than normal. Some people build an exercise bike and gaming computer station combo. <laughs> you can buy stand-up desks and add-ons that let you attach your laptop to a bicycle. Um, well, there was something I wanted. The only part that I I want to like call him out on or like I sure. kind of disagree with, right, is where totally. he says the best part totally. is you can eat more of what you like and be more fit. And I'm like, I I get what he's saying, but also if you're eating more of what you like and what you like is pizza all day, then yeah. that's not gonna <laughs> that's not gonna help, you know? Like that's a little that feels a little counterintuitive to me. And uh as and I also fast. I I like doing the fasting stuff because again, it's easy for me. Like mm. I, I drink tea all morning. Um and I'm still fasting mm -hmm. right now, and it just makes it like, I don't have to think about it. And I, I'm one of those people that, like, I think I'd be cool with trying Soylent, you know, just, like, a shake, like, just drinking my cow. Like, I, I, don't get me wrong. I enjoy food. Like I said earlier, pulling that beet out of the ground and taking a bite out of something fresh. I love it. But I don't enjoy the time prep. I don't enjoy going to the store to shop for food. Like, I don't enjoy trying to figure out what meal I'm going to make. And luckily, I'm the kind of person that I can, I can put together, you know, whatever I've got, I'll make a meal out of it. But it just is like, meh, like I don't want to. So I, I'm, How long I'm interested. I'd hope he. So um, I, well, I was just gonna say I'm, I, I okay. would be interested to see if we could convince Richard or if he'd be interested in trying that out. You know, like just mm. drink tea or coffee in the morning because it, it's, it's so. It I don't know. It just makes sense to me. So I do right mm. now. What I try to do every day is uh, eighteen on and six, eighteen off, six on. So okay. I'll, tr I'll usually like, I have, it's, a, it's a little bit, I heard that for women, um, and I should probably look into this a little bit more, but it's better to have a little bit of a longer window. Um, I hear a lot of people do a four hour or like even smaller than that. And that's just like with my day and how things go and like what I'm doing, I don't, I can't. So six hours is usually good for me. Like I'll break my fast. Like I'll probably break it after this, this is over. And then sure. I try to eat my last meal before six. So like, I don't know, like five or whatever. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I don't, I don't do that. Like, and then there's, there are nights where like, I don't know, something will happen and I'm just like, sure, I'm going to eat this popcorn right now. <laughs> no big deal. Yeah. Um, but the reason that I really try to stick to it and the reason that I, um, I feel very passionate about it, I guess, in a way is because it has mentally, it helps me to, to break a habit that I grew up with. My mom and my sister, and I yeah. see my niece now, they, they all live together still, and I see them doing this. They eat when they're bored. They eat when mm. they're stressed. They eat when they're anxious. They, they, that's their go-to thing. Is like, And I, I would say that that would be kind of like my most addicting personality kind of trait thing, right? Like, totally. I, I feel that urge to just mm -hmm. stuff my face with something because it's there right. and because I don't know what else to do. So mm. when I know that I'm fasting, that has helped. It helped. It has helped me more than anything maintain my weight, because right. I've gone, I've gone up and down. But doing the fasting really just helps me just like stay at an even keel. Like, I'll, and I'll notice like if I have not been fasting and I'm eating a little bit more and I'm allowing things that I wouldn't normally eat into my diet, you know, I'll see that few pounds come on, and then I'll be like, okay. <laughs> gotta gotta chill out on that and then i also like to throw in for me just walking like just yeah. going on a walk mm -hmm. um because i mean being in a van it is not there's not a lot of sure. you know space to move around and it's tough for me right now like this the first 30 days of this challenge are going to be extremely challenging for me be because i when working on the farm i had a heat stroke and oh yeah that yeah. has affected my life and it sucks totally. like i i can't go outside if it's like over 75 degrees and like sit mm. out in the shade it, i sure. actually went to float fest uh, a couple days ago and tried to do that i was like i'm gonna be fine it's only 80 out there and uh i came home and had a heat headache for the rest of the night and it just mm. it just it drains me and it gives me a migraine and it breaks my heart because i love being outside um, sure. but basically until, uh, we're moving, I'm going to move up North to Ohio for the summer for a, a gig that my boyfriend's doing and nice. it's much cooler up there. So I'm really excited, yeah. um, to really get like, I'll probably just walk for my cardio. 
Um, mm -hmm. I might try and do hit inside the van because I have an AC, but it's going to be tough because the sun, the sun, the summers in Texas, y'all. Woo! I, oof, I can only hard. imagine. Yeah. So yeah, Pacific Northwest. Oh man, it's so beautiful up there. <laughs> yeah, lots of lots of green and yeah, it's beautiful today. No, but uh, I I yeah, I want to piggyback on <clears throat> on what you're saying. Where kind of like yeah, if if you are sedentary and 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 once again, you know, some sometimes it can be easier said than done and things like that. But kind of the implementation that Richard does have with with that bike. The, the recumbent bike and mm -hmm. kind of being able to do both things at once, you know, two birds with one stone. But uh, you're right where when you are kind of more sedentary or or just anything that's kind of active that can, you know, if you do like any little step in the right direction, it can it can make that next step, you know, much easier. Um, but it's, it's much easier to like maybe indulge or like you say, maybe be bored yeah. and eat out of boredom than say, hey, this is my regimen and you know, that's actually what my girlfriend does too, is the, is the fasting. And, and, uh, I'm going to be getting into that as well too. Cause, cause I've done it in the past and had actually a lot of success in the past with it. Nice. And then you're right where, when, when you fall off a regime, it can be easy to be like, Oh, I'm bored or, Oh, whatever lame excuse to, you know, stuff your face. And, and that's not good. Cause you know, I'm not a religious guy at all, but, but they do say in, you know, like in certain texts of like, Hey, your body is your temple and things. So mm -hmm. if you're not really treating it right, then you're kind of just doing yourself a disservice so yeah it'll be fun to get back into those healthy habits i mean jackie says like you know sure the the mental state is one thing but also you know the the action and and the removal of uh whether it's all at once or slowly but surely the, the old habits and things like that yep yeah so i lost my train of thought i was gonna say something yeah. i forgot <laughs> No worries, lost, no worries. It, it always comes it. back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, let's see. Hate to admit it, but I never read all of sci fi. Sorry, I'm just kind of checking out the, the things. You are welcome, Toby Wan. I'm super glad that it's helpful for people. Like that really like like I think has been the biggest reward for me is hearing that people who weren't able to read sci before or like just weren't yep. you know like like didn't want to hear that the other audiobook like that's yeah. great like if i can do anything to get this book out there some more like it makes me super happy but yes changing this is the lives. comment you were talking about yeah changing and instituting new habits super important and hopefully jackie that's something that you know a lot of us that are doing this challenge um, you know, they say that it takes 21 days to create mm -hmm. a habit. So you've got at least, you know, several chunks of 21 days over the next 90 days to try and do that and try and create these habits. Mm. So that is really cool. Um, yeah. That, yeah. And that's, that's what I've done too, is like the 90 days and, and broken it down within like, okay, the first 30 days or the first week, uh, breaking it down to smaller bite size. Yes. Yes. I'm just, just gonna going through these real quick. Change the behavior first. Yeah. That's smart. Smart, smart. I forget that some people just listen to these streams. I got to be better at reading comments out loud. <laughs> um, I want to try soily green tea, Raj. <laughs> yeah. No, I hear you. It's, um, yeah, it's a, the real one. Oh, that's creepy. D Rush. Don't you know? <laughs> So I think green is people. It's people. I've never seen that film. <laughs> Me I neither. It referenced. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it's interesting hearing, hearing Richard. Um, it was a couple streams ago that someone asked him about like life advice and he was like, eat less, move more. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, you can tell yeah. that he's struggling with it and that, that that's something that mm. he, he wants to do. You know, I'm, I, I, it'd be cool if he had joined the challenge, but I don't think that's that's happening. But um, mm. yeah, maybe maybe through this we can inspire him to you know continue to lift those weights and use that bike and mm. not eat all the chocolate from Louis Vuitton. Because <laughs> he was like, <laughs> I'll just keep these over here. Um, <laughs> this is a good point here. Um, I love smoothies. That's actually how I break my fast. Um, mm. I'll have tea and then something that I just switched 
which I think is also helping me maintain my weight and maybe even lose a little bit, is that I was, at first, I was using fruit to break my fast. So I'd have like mm -hmm. an apple or a plum or um, I try to use low glycemic fruits, um, guava and papaya, oh, yeah. things like that. Um, but I switched to broccoli, y'all. <laughs> I used to Hell hate yeah. broccoli growing up. I hated it. I would not touch the stuff. And now it's just so wonderful. I have broccoli and hummus. And that's how I, mm -hmm. like, the first thing that I eat. It's like, all right, I'm just going to, like, put some greens in my body. It's going to be great. Is it is it just raw? Like, do you do any, do, do yeah, okay, just raw with some hummus. Just raw broccoli, yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. It Hell sounds yeah, yeah, yeah. so <laughs> weird. <laughs> but, no, not um, necessarily at all. Yeah. I think it might just sound weird because most of us, you know, yeah, I think the traditional society stuff might be weird compared to what you're doing seems more more natural and more like, I guess, like exactly. back in the olden days and stuff. So, yep. Yes, 100%. And that's the crazy thing is like how, I mean, I know how I've, I've watched documentaries and read books on it, but just the fact that our society went from this, uh, like the victory garden movement, you know, and like growing your own food. And we talked about that and we did that. And then all of a sudden microwave dinners right it's got to be yeah. easy for mom yeah. got to like make it real quick you know so i'm i i i see that there's a leaning now towards the other way again you know people are mm -hmm. interested again in growing their own food and and eating health healthily and uh, whole foods yeah for sure uh i got to blow my nose you guys <laughs> yeah <laughs> Sounds hold on good. one second i'll be right back <laughs> hey take your time yeah, you know, and uh, and Jackie's saying, uh, you know, Wild SJ, you did a super job with SciVive. Um, your voice definitely makes it uh, definitely makes it work. Thank you for doing this. And she had mentioned the the other person that had done the you know some of the transcription, which was like, Anne Anne Hex read SciVive, I think. Um, but the but the cool thing with with what uh, you know SJ has done is. A lot of it's, you know, all of it's already already done. And as she mentions too, for me, even though I have this printed out, like I'm not a huge reader, you know, I, I just really am not. And uh, most people can make excuses not to sit down and completely focus on something like that versus what I like to do, which is like when when I'll be listening to the the you know the 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 audio book that you've done, it'll be like you know in the gym or walking and things like that, where you know you can really do two birds with one stone and kind of yep. knock it out versus just sitting down and here's what I'm going to read. Yep, exactly. Just like Richard says, <laughs> and, you know, just like we just read in SciVive, he, he really recommends doing that. And that just makes so much sense to me too. Um, especially, like I said before, just the time, you know, because that, that's, that is our most precious commodity is our time. So I want to be sure that I'm utilizing it and, you know, getting the, the most gains <laughs> in the least amount of time as possible um oh this is cool too let me see where did i get to i don't think i got to this part so he says also if you need to move around for fitness anyway and i love this if you need to move around for fitness anyway you can try learning a skill while you're doing it fighting mm -hmm. dancing a sport while the gains you make in fitness can be eaten away by the passage of time and laziness the skills gained stay for a lifetime and i'm huge on dancing um that actually, <clears throat> for quite some time, was uh, a workout for me. Uh, I'm very involved in the drum and bass community here in Austin and uh, go to shows uh, pretty frequently um, until a couple years ago <clears throat> when all that happened. And, yep, you know, yep, yep. like things are starting totally. to pick up again, but it's still not like it was. I mean, I would I would go out to dance minimum one night, night a week. And this was not, wow. I'm not like... That's cool. Not only do I not drink, but when I go out mm -hmm. dancing, I drink water the whole time and I am dancing for hours. Like, well, we'd get there, I don't know, 10, 10, like before 10, right? Because uh, DJ's got to set up and then stay until two. And I am dancing 85% of the time. And, you know, that's, that's what, well, numbers, like about four hours of dancing, right? That's cardio, y'all. And I don't just, oh, I mean, yeah. you see Richard Hart dancing? Like, that's the level I'm on. Like, I do yeah, all the moves. Yep. So, yeah. yeah, it's serious. And I miss that, honestly. Like, I really mm. miss, like, being having that outlet and being able to go to go out to dance um, on that frequent basis. Like, there's monthly shows starting to pop up and things like that. But, yes, I, I absolutely love this part of SciVive where he's saying, you know, 
do something that is going to benefit you in more than one way. You know, you, yeah, you're mm -hmm. going to mm -hmm. lose the weight and, you know, be more fit doing whatever you're doing, but you also get to gain this skill and you keep that forever. forever. Mm. Yeah. I think, I think you had mentioned that one time of like, uh, what was it like? Uh, Cause it, it's specifically inside vibe of like singing in a different language. If you're trying to, yep. you know, learn a different language at the same time. And I think you had mentioned that you had done that before. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I moved to Puerto Rico and uh, moved out there and started taking Spanish classes and was listening to a lot of a lot of Spanish uh, language music and yeah, it's fun. <laughs> it was fun. Oh, I love gotta, it. Yeah, I got it. That's you know, it's one of those things. If you don't use it, you know, you kind of lose it. So yeah, I, I, I kind of want to get back into learning that. But uh, yeah, time, time. What I, what am I doing with my time? You know. <laughs> mm, oh, and there mm. is. Um, I would I, I kind of want to put out a call to anyone who is uh, if Spanish is your first language um, I I guess this would this is gonna take a little bit more time than I'm thinking there is already SciVive is translated into Spanish so if somebody wants to do that audio that would be badass um, that's that's a thing but also if we want to wait and like edit it and then translate it into every language there's also a French version I saw in the SciVive chat someone posted a really a French yeah French version of SciVive. So, um, yeah, do not let your language, you know, if you think you have a language barrier, don't let that stop you because there are mm. multiple languages of this book um, out already. And I'm sure that, you know, should it be edited and published and all sparkly, um, it could, that would go even further and get published mm. in several different languages, I would hope. Yeah. Um, yeah. So the next section I'm going to read is called The Gym. <laughs> My least favorite place. But let's see what Richard <laughs> says in SciVive about the gym. He says, If you go to a gym rat who's huge, he might know how to work out well, or he might not. How big he is has nothing to do with what he knows. It has to do with how long he has been in the gym. And so the people who get the biggest are not always the smartest. And that is for sure true. I mean, yep, I've seen yep, people... because. Yep. You got to think about it holistically, in my opinion, right? In my non-gym mm -hmm. rat opinion, there are people who will go there and only work out one part. I mean, you see these guys with like these huge arms and then they got noodle legs. You know? like, <laughs> Chicken legs. Oh my yeah. God. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or the other way around. Like they're, they got these big beefy legs and their arms are all flabby or it's usually the, the first way. But imbalance. So, you know, yeah. Yeah. There's an imbalance there. And um, yeah, it's important to think about all of that holistically um let's see longest. okay so he says people who get the most results in the gym are the ones who have done it the longest you are as fit as you have been recently working out consistently as soon as you stop working out consistently uh or for a period of time whatever fitness you had disappears quickly and isn't that so true <laughs> Um, yeah, he says, yeah. this is why I like weight loss better than fitness, because when you lose weight, that burdening weight stays lost. When you lift weights and get stronger, maybe you get a little muscle memory. Maybe it comes back a little quicker. And I, I'd, I'd be willing to bet that Jim Rat and Sam would have something to say about, <laughs> about that right there oh, for totally. sure. Yeah. I, uh, I wish they were here. Well, well you know, I'm going to, I actually am uh, hoping to open this up to more of a panel um, and have oh, multiple, yeah. multiple guests on so we can have more discussion. And that's kind of what I was hoping the SciVive Twitter community would be. Y'all, yeah, yeah. if you're in that Twitter community, start, start, start to say, I mean, it's not my group. Like I created it, but I, I made that so that we could have more discourse and more discussion around these principles that are in this book and, you know, how it has affected people's lives. And it's kind of quiet in there. So if you haven't checked it out, um, I'm pretty sure there's a link in in most of my videos, not this live one, but in most of the SciVive videos, there is a link to that um, Twitter group. And then also the, te the Telegram is a little more um, involved. There are definitely people speaking um, on different topics. In fact, earlier today... I saw someone mentioning meditation. So there was like a little um, uh, debate between whether or not meditation works and what it's good for. Uh, so yeah, definitely check both of those channels out if you guys haven't already um, in terms of continuing your, your SciVive <laughs> learning throughout the week. Um, totally. Yeah. So let's see. Was there, is there any, um, I don't know, is there anything that you necessarily want to like discuss or... Uh, any parts of, of this chapter you can think of that 
might be good to touch on. I'm putting um, you on the spot right now. Let me look. Oh, here, actually, <laughs> I, I lied. You think about that while I read this part because I just I just please scrolled do, past please. this and I was like, yes. Because so continuing with dance, music and BPM is the little subheading of this. He says, if you know how to dance, you know that your moves stop and start at multiples of the beat. Thus, if you want to hit a certain speed on a cardio machine, it can help to have music that hits the same beat naturally that you are trying to hit. If you want to hit 80 RPM on the bike, 160 BPM would sync each extension of your leg with a tick of the rhythm. If you enjoy dance and exercise, I would have to imagine that the dance instinct would modify your exercise behavior by going faster for faster songs with reason. You can find pre-made playlists to fit different paces and beats per minute, which is brilliant. Um, back in 2015, um, I ran for a little while. Um, I had a partner at the time who was um, very adamant about running being the best thing in the world, and I don't really agree with that. Um, I think it's it's nice to get out and stuff, but I do I do know that it's really hard on your joints. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but uh, during that time, that really helped me move. Like that helped me stay consistent was with running was like having this playlist that I was just like, yeah, <laughs> like, like pump me up and like you know like really. Uh, I, I I'd run to the beat. You know, I was like, be like, yes, yeah, this is totally. awesome. I'm doing it. So I like that um, suggestion that if you mm. are working out, you know, maybe you need a little push. Maybe you, I don't know. Like, I feel like a lot of people do listen to music, but if you're having trouble, um, you know, with getting motivated to work out, man, find you some Eye of the Tiger. Like, get, yeah, get, get yeah. a playlist that, you know, when you hear that song, it hypes you up. And even if it's, you know, you haven't used it for working out in the past or anything, like, if it's a song that brings positive, um, you know, positive feelings to you, then hopefully what you would do then is like associate that positivity with working out. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's true. I mean, you mentioned, uh, you know, some of the, the EDM and the dancing and things like that. And my dad and I did a whole bunch of like indoor cycling classes, uh, maybe, maybe a couple of years back, but, but same thing where, cause each instructor was different, like on a different day of the week, but but they would always listen to, yeah, kind of higher higher beats per minute uh, music versus say like a slower slower song. So that would kind of get you in the in the rhythm. And then to your point, you know, your <laughs> your feet are kind of you know naturally going with the the rhythm of the beat. So that's really good yeah. advice. Yeah, I think the the thing that I had thought about earlier that I forgot, um, if this little like thought just came up again, and. Um, what, what it might have been was I was thinking about my dad and how I talked about earlier going and, and helping and caretaking him and mm -hmm. what the big the the biggest takeaway for me with that was I really saw how underlying conditions and how ignoring your health and not you know thinking th just thinking that like oh I'm fine like everything's all right it's gonna cause you to take longer to recover. You're gonna have a lot, probably like a lot worse symptoms with things mm -hmm. because of these underlying conditions. Like I, I, I get that whole like underlying conditions thing. That was my father had diabetes, high blood pressure, high cholesterol. He should have died for all intents and purposes. Like he should have, th yeah. that disease should have taken him out because he was, he oh. is, and he's in his seventies. Like he, he mm -hmm. checks all the boxes on this should have probably killed you. And he, I love my dad. I'm so grateful that he is fine and healthy today. You know, he, he does have some lingering symptoms from it, but he's off one of his blood pressure medications because of it. He lost, I mean, cause he went through all that. He was in the hospital for a few weeks. He lost a bunch of weight, but mm. with me, the biggest reason I was there was to encourage his lifestyle change. I was like, dad, you can't, you cannot can continue to put this crap in your body and think that you're gonna be fine <laughs> like it's that's yeah. not how it works so you know i'm i'm grateful that he was able to live through that and to see that and to make the change and to be able to move forward you know with his life and you know and i'm hopeful to be able to retire and enjoy his last few years of life you know i think um richard talked about aubrey de gray um 
really got into lo- a lot of longevity after his mother passed. Um, and, you know, I'm sure a lot of us, um, you know, especially like, I don't know, I, I feel like we're, we're probably like a little different in age. Um, I'm, I'm definitely older than you. But, um, you know, my parents are aging and like, it's hard to see that. It's really hard to watch. Yeah, and like my mom, yeah. she's not in shape. She's she's not doing well. Like she doesn't even like I try to encourage her to just go walk like mom, please mm. just go walk around your neighborhood, you know, and um it worries me because i'm just like i having had that experience i just had with my dad i have four (laughs) i have four sets of parents i was adopted and have met all my family since so there's my mom that raised me and my dad that raised me they're divorced and my dad has a has is married remarried and then my birth mother and my birth father and my birth father has his family and then my they were they were never married so i've got i got all these parents (laughs) and yeah, yeah, i'm yeah. the oldest and sure. in every case and i the responsibility is gonna fall on my shoulders as it did with mm. my dad and that is that's like a freaking eye-opening like really intense thing to have to think about as we right. get older and our our parents get older you know like who's gonna take care of you because if you're not taking care of yourself right now is that my responsibility to, to then come and take right. care of you you know no you're right so yeah it's uh, yeah that's it's, that's yes. a realization Oof. for sure yeah it's tough you know because it's just like i like you cared for me and loved me as a baby you know you took care of me and i am who i am now you know thanks to all of that but it's just like man like you gotta know that your health is not just important to you <laughs> you know yeah, there's a whole lot of yeah. people that love you that want to see you healthy and want to see you be successful mm. No, it's true. Yeah. Like someone really close. I'm not going to like, you know, dox, dox who it is, but yeah, one of my, you know, family members started, you know, smoking cigarettes again for the past seven years. And it's like, you know, do do you want to see, you know, some of these other advancements for, for your kids or whoever else. And some of these other things like, come on, like, yeah, don't just do it for yourself, but do it for your loved ones too. But, But yeah, sometimes, you know, sometimes that doesn't happen. And, you know, sometimes, you know, people, people make their own choices and things like that. So you're right. It's, it's not a, it's not a fun thing to, to think about. No, no, it's not. And, you know, it just, it's, I know that it's something that's going to be a continuing and growing issue within my life as my parents get older. So, you know, if I can do anything to be an example or, you know, to like show some way to help them be healthy that's that's i think also part of my own motivation for staying healthy is to be like hey it's really not that it's not that difficult like you know like i don't do much like i said again i don't go to the gym i don't you know i don't work out um i i try to walk and do what i can that's changing right 90 day fitness challenge i'm gonna be doing some push-ups and who knows (laughs) all sorts of things um so i just scrolled past and saw this a little part here that I want to read because this is interesting. I forgot about this um, and I'm curious as to what it is. So this is again, SciVive chapter two, body. This little section is called the 40% rule. It says the 40% rule is a concept used by Navy SEALs to increase mental toughness. The story was told by Jesse Itzler in his audiobook, Living with a Seal, 31 Days Training with the Toughest Man on the Planet. Itzler wrote about his house guest. This is in quotes. He would say that when your mind is telling you you're done, you're really only 40% done. And he had a motto, if it doesn't suck, we don't do it. And that was his way of focusing, uh, of, of forcing us to get uncomfortable, to figure out what our baseline was and what our comfort level was and just turning it upside down. And then this is Richard. Now he says, one way of thinking about the 40% rule is to train till failure. When you reach that point of exhaustion during a run or pushing weights, when you would usually stop, keep running for one more minute or complete another rep with your weight, with your weight training. You'll be surprised to see how much further you can push yourself. And I think that's a really, I'm glad I came across this because that's a super great point for this challenge because that's what we're doing, right? We're challenging ourselves. Mm. Um, and I, I like, I like that. That's kind of like, um, the, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It's like the use of a trainer, 
right? Like I've I've, mm-hmm. I've had I I like once way back in the day I did like one session with a personal trainer, and that was the biggest takeaway was that when I right. felt like I couldn't do it anymore, they were like, "No, one more, go for it, do it," you know. <laughs> um, and I did, and I was able to. So that is applying that forty percent rule. When you're when you're done, you're only forty percent done. That's intense. Mm. That's a good point. I, I had the similar experience with uh, with uh, one of the football trainers in uh, in high school, sophomore year of high school, and and he was like a CrossFit coach and things like this. But mm-hmm. but same thing when when we had initially done the weight room before, it was it was way less intense than this. This was more of like a CrossFit and things like that. And so similar to what you mentioned too, where where your body can really be. <clears throat> pushed to limits and, and levels that you never thought before because you know maybe you were just putting that plateau on yourself or that limit on yourself versus actually yeah doing it until failure yeah i'm gonna bring up this comment real quick from toby one so he says helping my dad i recently learned alzheimer's disease or alzheimer's does not have a genetic link but it does have a correlation to fitness and diet so it's not just about your body, but also about saving your mind. One hundred percent, yes. Um, and I, I believe that's true for probably more diseases than we realize. Um, I, th- I think that, I mean, it's connected, right? Like our body and mind are are all within this little flesh shell that we're walking around in, and um, yeah, it's important that because I feel like you almost can't have one without the other. You know, like if, if you're not mentally sound and like able to focus on your physical body, then, you know, it's going to make it a lot more difficult for you to, to get to that point. Um, yeah, definitely good point there, Toby Wan. Um, yeah, that's, uh, that's like, like motivating for, for him that he's mentioning, right? Like, Hey, once, once he's learned that, okay, Hey, you know, maybe I can make some changes here. So, so I'm not in, in that position that his, you know, that people might be in that he doesn't want to be in when he's their age. Yep. Absolutely. Um, so let me, I'm going to keep going with this little part. Cause this is great. This is all really good for this, us starting this fitness challenge together. Um, okay. Be sure to do this safely. Super important. Yes. Yes super safe. Um, especially if you all are doing weightlifting, things like that, make sure you have a spotter if you're at a gym. Um, I know that much from, (laughs) from my ex who was a gym rat, you know, like it's important to make sure that you're being safe. Um, don't drop your Mm. weights. Don't be that guy. Um, not related. Um, (laughs) he says injuring yourself is counterproductive. Um, this gets your lungs to understand they need to be larger because if you never reach their limits, why would they get bigger? It's the equivalent of having a freer flowing air system in your car's engine. Free peak horsepower. Everything after you've warmed up seems easier, and it seems to let you hold a higher heart rate for longer, which means you burn more calories. Honor the tough workouts. The less you want to do it, the better. What if you can't hit the same numbers you're used to hitting? That's great. You're pushing the limit. So just back off the weight a bit, or a whole lot, Unless you're injured, you should still try to keep up the habit, the habits. Even if you have to go in and pretend to do the lift, whatever it takes to maintain the habit, the habit is worth 100 times what the lift is worth. Maintain your good habits. Oh, I like that a lot. That's really, you know, very, I think, relevant to what we're, what we're taking on and, um, I think that that is, again, the point that I hope is stressed the most, not just people's physical change, but the the habit forming changes, you know, like I, mm-hmm. I have no doubt that this is going to be life changing for some people, you know, having this group, like a lot of people I've heard here and there, you know, people talking about how they haven't really had a community. I think you even kind of mentioned that, right? Because like, yeah. Your parents oh, yeah, and, totally. You know, yep, yep, yep. Stuff, right. Like, yep. this is this is our community. This is our family. And, you know, we're here to support one another and lift each other up. And for the most part, (laughs) we try, you know, Um, but just as Hex 
financially has been life changing for people. I strongly believe that working together as, as a team in a way, you know, and encouraging one another through this challenge is also going to be life changing for a lot of people. And I'm excited to see that. I think that um, I just, you know, I commend Jim Rat and Sam for for doing yeah, this challenge and for yeah for bringing and for bringing people on board. And I like that they changed it. I didn't realize they had changed it until I think yesterday. But it was first, I think it was the Hex Fitness and now it's Crypto Fitness. Because, yeah, there's people, that, like I said, from last night, just had, being in that space, there's some guy that had never heard of Hex before and is now doing this Crypto Fitness Challenge. So, mm. yeah. yeah, well, that's that's one of the that's one of like the super, super early on suggestions that Funding Jim had kind of given me or just people in the community of, I mean, you know, you're, you're already broadcasting to your community. So let's try and get some people outside of that or, or myself and Toby, we're going to be streaming at a uh, 2 PM Pacific standard time. And uh, so we're kind of, you know, changing up the title a little bit to where it's not just the same damn thing every single time. And uh, when you mention Jim Rat Crypto and, and Sam Stolt, the, the cool thing about what they're doing is, is once again, that's their, that's their expertise, right? That's something that they're really good at. And so it's something that they can provide value in. Uh, so I really like that. Yep, absolutely. And I, you know, I even, I had to ask a question because, um, well, whatever, like it's on Twitter, it's, it's public knowledge anyways. So um, I had spoke, spoken about running back in the day and I feel like back then, in fact, the picture there was, they had a thread of like, show your best picture or whatever, like your, you at your best kind of thing. Oh, yeah, the one that I had posted sure. oh, yeah, totally. was, was from around, it was from like maybe the year after I had lost a ton of weight from running. And like, I'm very like in that, in those years, I was just like stick figure, like, you know, like, and I, I like, even though I was thin, I didn't necessarily feel good about my body. Like I wasn't like, you know, like I may, I may have in some people's opinions looked the best then. Like I, and I feel like that kind of like, I don't know, basically what I'm trying to get to is it's great to have these experts because I'm trying to be fit and not like lose all of the body weight that I like having where it is, <laughs> you know, like right, there's certain right, areas right. on a women yeah. where you want to keep the body weight, right? <laughs> So um, totally. it's been it's been nice to just like get little tips and tricks on how to, you know, be toned and like this is my I, I took my my pictures this morning but like this right here and like my thighs are my two mm. like points where I really want to like just tone that up you know like I and and I I don't know like I've never been the kind of person to like look in the mirror a lot or you know be really concerned about the way I look um, I think. I, I think at one point I had I had that same partner who he was more concerned about the way I looked than I did, you know. So it was that was a whole and I've talked about this a little bit before, but it, that was a very unhealthy sure. yeah. point in my life in terms of like yeah, yeah. I lost weight and I might have looked like great, but it was not good. Like it was not yeah. a good like space for Mentally me. Mentally and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So you know I I'm hopeful that you know, again, that this is something that we're able to really just encourage one another to be. And I like it that it's fitness, right? Because it's not weight loss. Mm. Like, no, not right. everybody's going right, right, to need to lose right. weight. And especially there, there were a couple guys in the chat last night, they were talking about they need to gain weight, you know? And totally. I know I have a couple really good friends with that same, that same issue. They cannot like, especially like these, these dudes, because they're just like active all the time and doing stuff. And like, I don't know how they burn calories, like, but they do yeah, it all yeah. day long and they cannot put weight on. You know, so it's, it's mm, very difficult. Yeah, for I've got friends like that. Too. Yeah. And you're just like, oh, but, but, you know, like you, like some people get mad at that. But at the same time, like someone very close to me has had a terrible body image most of his mm. life because of sure. it. You know, he's just like, I just, I've been called skinny and scrawny and like, no one likes that, you know? Right, right, right. So, so yes, I like this uh, crypto curricula. Really good to hear that, you know. And that's what I'm hoping too. Like we were talking about, maybe Richard, you know, same kind of thing. Like if if you're not involved in the challenge itself, but this challenge can motivate you in any way, shape, mm. or form to continue to be fit. Like more more winning all day long. I think that's yep. such a win. Yeah. yeah, that was that was the same thing for myself. Where yesterday I reached out to <clears throat> one of the family members and I was like, hey, you know, so and so. Um, you know, today is the last day tonight. At, so, you know, at this time, do you want to, do you want to join? And they're like, no, 
but I'll observe from like the sideline and we'll, you know, we'll kind of play it by ear type of deal. And, yep. um, and yeah, you know, sometimes it takes seeing kind of some of the the results or just the, the idea of the fitness, like you said, cause, cause yeah, for me, it's, it's the, the losing the weight that I had gained the excess weight and, you know, getting the muscle back and things like that. But then you mentioned where like everyone's in a different spot. So that's a, that's also important to understand that it's not like a, a blanket rule for every single person. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. So, um, yeah, that, that kind of wraps up in terms of me reading today. Um, I'm going to kind of leave it there. I'm going to go through some of the chat and then we'll probably kind of wrap it up within the next 10 minutes here. Um, but yeah, so let's just, let's talk, let's see what everyone's talking about. And I, yeah, I totally agree with this. Um, you know, that's, such a again such a cool thing within our community because as hex stakers we are you know you're putting your finances out there so you have to, it's like almost like you kind of have to have that mentality that <laughs> you want to be around for the next you know good, good chunk of time absolutely well absolutely. So speaking of which i mean you know that that's from jackie uh, i think she said she was 75 from the the you know the ladies hex stream and she's got Quattro Cinco. So, you know, that's that's awesome. Yeah. And it really goes to show you that uh, she had said the same thing, too, of the healthier habits and things like that. So that's really cool that when it is a, uh, you know, when it is a consistent habit and a healthy habit, you can just maintain that versus uh, some of the other previous ones. Mm -hmm. Yes, indeed. Let's see. I thought there were more comments, but there's not. <laughs> Anybody have any <laughs> questions, comments, anything strike you as interesting? I love, I love D Raj's peanut gallery comments <laughs> talking about, well, it's not really peanut gallery, but yeah, the Bollywood. I, I actually, uh, I've, I've seen a Bollywood film. I think it's called, called Bride and Prejudice, not Pride and Prejudice, but Bride and Prejudice is really good. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta um, love it. And do the screwing the light bulb move. Very <laughs> Am I doing it right, D Raj? Am I doing it right? <laughs> um, oh, speaking of which, see. I saw uh, I saw him and uh, in Super Hex win uh, in in person the other day. Like they they were at oh, least you know so they had taken jealous. a photo. Yeah, I was like, oh, that's awesome. You know, that's super cool. You know. <laughs> yeah. I can't wait to meet D Raj. We're. Uh, um star-crossed lovers there was there was like the i think one of the first uh times i ever heard him talk because he was he loves sci vibe and um and i i also i love d Raj that you do quotes and stuff like that um if you have the capacity and if you are or not or if you are or are not in the twitter sci vibe community i'd love to have you in there um putting some more of those quotes in and talking a bit more about it and that's kind of for anyone who's sci-fi of minded or interested um let's let's have more conversation you know let's like talk more about how it is that we mm -hmm. can you know be, be survivalists and you know be people who are going to live to see our you know 15 year and then some stakes um as they as they keep because i mean you know is as those stakes come out people are continuing to stake for 15 years yeah you know? so yeah. it's going to be a, a continual rolling cycle of fitness and badassery yeah, when it was designed to initially, we we couldn't they couldn't do it because of the um, some of the constraints on on Ethereum and and the maximum gas limits and things like this. But it was designed initially to go up to like fifty years, <laughs> you wow. know. Yeah. yeah, and so they had to do you know Quattro Cinco because of some of those limitations. But but even still, I mean, you look at something like that, and it's like, man, Bitcoin hasn't even been around for that long. So it's uh it's awesome to see this this community doing things differently and, and focusing on those things because you're right you really are betting on yourself when when you're doing a quattro cinco <clears throat> or someone else that can take over mm -hmm. yes absolutely and this is a great reminder from crypto curricula <laughs> drink your water today that's an interesting topic too i i don't know how really it happened maybe it was just in part leaving my parents home and moving away to college um but i somehow on my own made the switch from juice and soda and milk to water like 
I, and I, I can't think of like when or how that change happened. Like it definitely wasn't like a totally conscious thing, but um, that has been, I think also monumental in the way that I'm able to maintain my weight is because I know that those things are empty calories, juice, yeah. soda, lots of milk, like yeah. y'all look. So this has been the biggest thing for me, reading the ingredients, know mm. what you're putting in your body and look at how much sugar is, at, especially added sugar, right? Like yeah. natural sugars, so that's all right. You know, it's good. You're going to get that in things. But, you know, you go to the store and I saw this on the the do and do not eat list. Um, but um, if you look for dried fruit, um, look for ones that have less sugar or like not added sugar in them because that can really like spike up your sugar intake. Um, uh, energy drinks. And things like that, you know, it's just it, yeah. all of that is going to contribute. And those are the things that a lot of people don't think about. They think, oh, mm -hmm. it's fruit. I'm being healthy. Or, oh, yeah, it's juice. Yeah. It's healthier than yeah. soda. Y'all, there are mm. some juices out there that are, are going to have more sugar than sodas. Right. So it's to me, I think that's one of the big things that I'd like to, you know, uh, mm. remind the community and just remind people as they're going through this fitness challenge is to really look at the label and and yeah. read what that's and calories calories is not a thing that i've ever really like looked at or worried about it's more just like the sugar that's in it the saturated mm -hmm. fat that's in it um and then what it's actually made up of you know i know i have a mm -hmm. friend who she had cancer as a young kid and sure. so she has been very health-minded all of her life and so she won't she won't drink anything that has um natural flavors in it yeah um on then there's also like yellow yellow number five and red number oh yeah all of those yep. yellow yep. like mm -hmm. those color number combos like that yeah. stuff's yeah. not really good for you you mm. know and and mm -hmm. of course everything in moderation and if you're gonna eat something that's got you know something in it like every once in a while it's probably not gonna kill you but over time in it in will. these little quantities you know it's probably gonna affect you in some way shape or form mm. Well, I, I wanted to comment on just something real quick that you did mention because you mentioned like the, the sodas and the milks and stuff like that, um, or soda and milk, right? But but also with, with some of these energy drinks or some of these like different, I don't know, I guess just drinks, you, you have to your point, the advertisement of, of uh, sugar-free or, or zero calorie and things like this. But then when you look at some of the sweeteners like the sucralose or the aspartame, some of these things, some of those things have been correlated directly to cancer or to some of these yep. other, uh, you know, conditions that aren't healthy for you. And it's like anything else where it's not going to, like you mentioned, not going to kill you the, the first time that you do that. Right. But if that is part of your regimen and you think that like, oh, I'm just drinking my zero calorie energy drink or whatever, um, then, you know, you, you might think that you're doing something that's that's healthy that's actually detrimental and so that's important to look at too you mentioned the the labels so that's a really yeah. good advice cool thanks <laughs> it's it's helped me for sure you know and it's been cool actually seeing my stepson uh kind of pick up on that like he'll be oh, yeah. over at his mom's house and like <laughs> he'll be like this thing this has too, too much of this or that in it and i'm like <laughs> <laughs> We're, That's working good. working my hippie magic on this kid it's great. <laughs> yeah those good good <laughs> habits are rubbing off on him that's awesome yeah yeah and you know that's a, i think that's a, an important thing to learn when you're young you know that you you can you can also be in charge of your health and what you what you're putting into your body you know um just one little comment right here uh john j uk says it's really easy to cook meals from scratch tonight i'm cooking garlic ginger chili chicken stir fry portion rest oh, up yeah. for the next few days that's been tough for me too um doing meal planning and um prepping i think that it's it's great i think that it's super helpful and for someone who doesn't uh like i mentioned earlier i don't enjoy spending time cooking uh doing meal prep um when i do it <laughs> is great and helpful uh in fact i'm actually gonna hit up uh, monica mofit meals about yeah uh, hell yeah food she's stuff. great yeah, I, I've heard from several people in the community that um, she's got some great advice and information. So, and, and, and I hope, I would hope, or maybe this is something I can suggest, that maybe she be a little bit more of a part of that challenge, too, in some way, in, in terms of the food part of it. There is a, um, in the app that we're using for this fitness challenge, there is um, a list of, like, do and do not eat kind of foods. And you mentioned the those different sweeteners. They're on that list. There's only two sweeteners that 
that are approved and I can't think of what they are right now. So I don't want to miss, miss say it, but, sure. um, but yeah, it is definitely, uh, something that, uh, we need to be mindful of, you know, cause it's, it's not just what you're doing to your body. It's what you're putting in your body. That's going to make a difference. But yeah, uh, that's kind of, we're going to kind of wrap it up right there. Um, um. Yeah, lots of good points today. Um, I'm hopeful that this stream is helpful and uh, encouraging to anyone who is or even is not doing the challenge. If you are just in a challenge in your life, <laughs> yeah, you know, like yeah. if you want to, if you want, if you're doing your own challenge um, as this is going on, like more power to you. And please, like, feel free to reach out. If I don't know an answer about something, I am very happy to like be able to try and connect dots. Like that's something that I enjoy doing as well is like making connections and be like, Hey, like, I don't know, but this person does, um, totally. you know, and it seems like there are, there's no lack of that here in the community of people who are willing to, to answer and, um, you know, give you more information. Yeah, <sighs> Excellent. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Bran, for being here. Yeah. I feel like the stream is a long time coming, especially considering like SciVive. Um, you know, I know that that's been a big thing that you've been talking about for, you know, I'm, I'm sure as long as you've been in crypto and, and or at least, you know, knowing about Richard. So, no, it's true. It's been and, great. Uh, yeah. And once again, you know, like you mentioned, it's, uh, it's cool that, you know, everyone, not everyone, but that the two people in the community that would probably be best to spearhead something like this, Sam and, and uh, Jim Rat Crypto are uh, are taking that initiative and, and wanting to help out in any way that they can because you know a lot of people do just need uh, a little bit of uh, motivation or or mm -hmm. advice or different things that they can do maybe because like with myself and one of my friends we're uh, we're both you know uh, abstaining from alcohol the whole time you know and nice. things like that where it's it's much I will join you to, with that yeah 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 awesome. I don't drink awesome, often you know? anyways but like you know, to, to do, to do it for the, a chunk of time. I'm about it. Yeah. Yeah. So just little, little short wins. So yeah. Speaking of which, you're going to go downstairs and do some, uh, some cardio and, you know, yeah. one, one day at a time, you know, <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. And that's the, that's the mindset that we need to keep in mind is it, it is one day at a time y'all. None of this is going to happen overnight and we're going to do it together. So thank you again so much for joining us. Thank you again, Bran, for coming on this stream. Looking forward to more conversations and keep sci everyone. Y'all have a great rest of your day.